Balaam's Prophecy In our last story, we learned how Balak, king of Moab, was threatened by the vast number of Israelites. Out of fear, Balak sent for Balaam to curse Israel. Balak offered a great reward to Balaam if he cursed Israel, but God would not allow it. As Balaam was on the road to meet Balak, God caused Balaam's donkey to speak. The absurdity awakened Balaam to what he was doing. In this story, we learn about how Balaam is still unable to curse the Israelites and gives a word about one coming from out of Israel, as inspired by the book of Numbers. Hello, I'm Pastor Jack Graham with today's episode of The Bible in a Year. In our last episode, we learned how Balak, king of Moab, sought out a pagan soothsayer named Balaam and offered treasures if he would curse the growing Israelite people. Balak was afraid of the Hebrews who, though untrained and not hostile, could easily overthrow his kingdom if they decided to do it. We learned how Balaam responded, negatively at first, but then he tried to seek out Balak in opposition to God's commandment. We then heard the bizarre, strange tale of Balaam's donkey, who spoke to Balaam before the angel of the Lord appeared and warned Balaam not to oppose God. He sent Balaam along to meet Balak with instructions to say only what God told him to say. Today, we'll hear what Balaam says to Balak. So let's listen to today's reading. Balak simmered in his fear of Israel. He faced the palace grounds, anticipating Balaam's return, so that he might curse Israel. When word came to Balak that Balaam had finally arrived, Balak rushed to the outskirts of Moab and met Balaam. What delayed you, Balak said? I have offered you great riches to curse the Israelite people. Do you not trust me? I am here now, Balaam replied. Balaam was resolved to only speak the words of God, for he had come to understand his own selfish ambition. You should know that I do not have any power to curse or bless. That belongs to God alone. I will only say what God allows, Balaam said with resolve in his voice. The next day, Balak took Balaam to a cliff overlooking the Israelite camp. The two looked at the camp in awe, for the Israelites were like a sea of people. Balaam could not help but understand Balak's fear. Yet as he looked upon the people of Israel, he could sense the hand of God on them. An indescribable blessedness surrounded them, as if the presence of God was not near the people, but was among people. Balaam turned towards Balak and his men and said, God requires us to build seven altars to him. There we will make sacrifices and the Lord will speak his will. Balak had his men gather all that was needed. There on the cliff they burned sacrifices to God and worshipped him. Smoke arose from the cliff, and the people watched as Balaam retreated back to be with God in silence. There God spoke to him in prophetic poetry. Never before had Balaam received such beautiful and clear thoughts from God. The experience almost led him to tears. Balaam arose back towards Balak and the people surrounding him. Balaam spoke with booming and eloquent voice for all to hear. As the river runs smoothly over stones, so did Balaam's words flow from his tongue. Balaam prophesied before everyone, saying, From the distance Balak brought me to the eastern mountains. Surrounded by the beauty of this land, I have been asked to curse Jacob and denounce Israel. How can I curse whom God has blessed? How can I denounce those whom God has never forsaken? For from the mountaintops I see him, and below the rolling hills I witness him moving. Behold, the people dwelling below do not consider themselves a nation, yet they outnumber the dust, and they are blessed. Let me die a death like Jacob's, blessed with children who create a nation." Balak listened to Balaam in total dismay. Enraged by his words, Balak asked, What are you doing? You are supposed to curse Israel, yet now you bless them before my people? Balaam replied calmly, saying, I told you that I would only speak the words of God. Balak refused to accept defeat. 
he brought Balaam to another summit near the hills to gaze upon Israel. Perhaps you would reconsider if you truly understood how great of a threat they were, Balak said as he showed Balaam another part of Israel's camp. As it turned out, their numbers were even greater than Balaam had originally thought. Their camp stretched around the cliffs, miles into another valley. In the new view on top of the cliffs, Balaam built seven more altars. The people watched Balaam in silence. Fear had made them desperate, so they looked at Balaam with anxious anticipation. Balaam listened closely, his eyes closed and brow furrowed. God spoke to Balaam again in poetry. His words soothed the heart of Balaam. Balaam opened his eyes and turned towards Balak and the people, saying, Arise, Balak, hear the words being sung from the voice of God. The Lord is not a man that his fickle mind should sway. All he has spoken, he shall be fulfilled. I have received a command to bless, for God has blessed them and shall not revoke it. He has not brought forth suffering to Jacob, nor will he send trouble to Israel. The Lord God is among them, and his mighty voice is shouting like the wind in waves. A voice of a king commands them. He brings them out of Egypt and is for them like the horns of a wild ox. No magic or enchantment could ever oppress the nation of Israel. Behold the mighty people. As a lioness, it rises, and it shall not lie down until it has devoured its prey and drunk the blood of the slain. The people shuddered in fear at the sound of Balaam's voice. Balak, however, became annoyed. You shame me by coming here and blessing them. Not cursing them is one thing, but could you not even do us the courtesy of not blessing them? Balak's anger rose and he once more brought Balaam to another vantage point to view Israel. They moved the altars a third time and offered sacrifices to God. Balaam spoke again, saying, The oracle of him whose eyes were opened and hears the word of God. I see the vision of the Almighty. How lovely are your dwelling places, O Israel! You are like palm groves that stretch across the shores and gardens beside a river. You are like aloes that God has planted. Water shall flow from you, and seeds shall be within the waters. Your kingdom shall be exalted. God has brought you out of slavery and defends you with the strength of a wild ox. You shall eat up the nations and your adversaries. You shall break their bones in pieces and pierce them with mighty arrows. Blessed are those who bless you, and cursed are those that curse you. Balak could take no more of Balaam's prophecies. I have called you here to curse my enemies, and you stand here and bless them again, Balak said. Balak's fear, anger, and hatred boiled over. He sent Balaam away and began to retreat. Balaam began to leave, but before doing so, he had another word for Balak and his people. Only this time Balaam spoke of a prophecy that transcended time. His words heralded an ancient promise once made to Abraham. It was a prophecy hoped for, and a prophecy that would unfold before all humanity past, present, and future. Balaam spoke powerfully, saying, I see him, but not now. He is not near. A star shall come out from Jacob. A scepter shall rise out of Israel. All the cities shall bow before him. After speaking these words, Balaam left. Riding his donkey, Balaam departed from the frightened land of Moab. A newfound heart for God's people overcame him, as well as an anticipation of what would unfold out of Israel. Who was this star? How would he make all the nations crumble before him? What was God going to do? We begin today's story with an anxious King Balak awaiting the arrival of Balaam. He's offered many treasures to Balaam and is sure when Balaam arrives, he will curse Israel and calm Balak's fears. But the king's hopes are dashed as Balaam tells him he will not curse Israel. Blessing and cursing are God's to give, not his. And furthermore, he must speak to Balak only what God tells him to say. Clearly, his encounter with God on the road to Moab changed Balaam. 
Balak has a plan. Maybe if he shows Balaam how big the Israelite contingent is, he'll understand the threat and yield to the king's request. So they go up to a high mountain to see a portion of the Israelites. The crowd was very large, but Balaam was resolved to only obey God. He tells Balak to build seven altars and offer sacrifices to the one true God who will then speak his will. Balak does as Balaam requests, and the offerings rise up from the cliffs. God comes to Balaam and tells him what to say. Balaam will not curse the descendants of Jacob, those whom God has blessed. His words are a beautiful testimony, in fact, to God's enduring faithfulness to Israel. Balak is very angry and disappointed. Rather than curse these people, Balaam has blessed them. But he doesn't give up. He shows Balaam even more Hebrews, and their numbers are staggering. But Balaam listens to God just as he promised he would. They move the altars and other sacrifices, and God again speaks through Balaam of all that God has done for Israel. He has blessed them and dwelt among them. God will not allow his people to be cursed. Balak is more than irritated. This isn't the outcome he expected. He desperately asked Balaam to neither curse nor bless them. Again, Balaam is faithful. He must do as God tells him. A third time, Balak shows him more of the Israelites, and God delivers a message through Balaam. His words, far from spelling doom for Israel, tell of a growing nation blessed and protected by the hand of Almighty God. Balak's irritation turns to rage. He sends Balaam away and slinks back into defeat. Before he leaves, though, Balaam delivers one more message, one that echoed the promise that God made to Abraham long ago, one that speaks hope not only for Israel, but for all the world. Here's that message. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come forth out of Jacob. A scepter shall rise from Israel. Today's reading reminds us that God can use anyone who turns their ears to him and obeys him. Balaam was not an Israelite. He was not one of God's chosen people. But God worked in a powerful way through this man to bless Israel. When Balaam encountered God in his life, he was forever changed. And through him, God delivered a message of great hope that would resonate throughout the generations and into the world. A promise of a scepter, a savior who would yet come. Dear God, thank you for this amazing story of how you can use the most unlikely people to speak truth and to bring blessing. Help us to follow Balaam's example of boldly speaking of your greatness and faithfulness always. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to today's Bible in a Year podcast. I'm Jack Graham from Dallas, Texas. Download the Pray.com app and make Bible reading and prayer the priority of your life. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it with someone you love, because by sharing this podcast, you can make a difference, a big difference, an eternal difference in someone else's life. And if you want more resources on how to tap into God's power for your life, be sure to visit jackgraham.org. God bless you. This episode is sponsored by MediShare, an innovative healthcare solution for Christians to save money without sacrificing quality.